right, so next we want to talk about convergence of power series, right? So as I mentioned in the introduction, once you're handed a power series, one of the first things you want to do is figure out which values of x are in the domain, right? What's the domain? For which x does it make sense to evaluate the power series, right? Um, for what values of x is this thing going to actually converge to a number? That's what we care about, okay? So it turns out there are exactly three possibilities. Either it only converges at, oh, this is not right. Let's fix this. At x equal to c. Okay. So either it only converges at x equal to c, which is kind of the boring case, right? That means that, well, x minus c is equal to 0. So the whole thing is just 0, right? Um, or it could happen that it converges for every real number. It's defined everywhere, right? Domain could be all real numbers. That's often the case. Be nice if it's the case here. Um, I mean, one way that can happen is if you have a sequence that's eventually zero, and this is actually secretly a polynomial. We've just written it down as a power series, right? Um, so if there's some maximum value of, of n, so that for all uh, n bigger than that maximum value, these terms are just zero, then it's a polynomial, and certainly that's going to happen, right? There's no question of convergence. But we'll see that even, even if these terms go on forever, right, um, if they get small enough, fast enough, we might still be able to guarantee that this series converges no matter what value you put in for x. We'll see if that happens, okay? Um, and then there's sort of the intermediate scenario where the series converges for some values of x and not for others. We saw that with the geometric series, right? If you think of um, the x to the n, just simply a n is equal to 1 for all n, you just get a geometric series, right? But you treat x as variable and you say, okay, when does that converge? Well, it converges between minus 1 and 1, right? So in general, you find that there will be some interval that is centered at this number c. You can move a little bit in one direction or the other. And all the x values in that integral work, I interval, sorry, you work, you get, you get a convergent power series. But as soon as you move outside the interval, it's going to diverge. Okay. Um, so this theorem lets us make a definition. Okay. So let's go ahead and make it. So our definition is this. The, the number r in part c of our theorem here. This is called the radius of convergence of the power series. Okay, so the radius of convergence. Um, and actually, you can cover cases A and B as well. You just have to sort of say, well, well, in this case here, I guess we only get C. So that means that we would put R equal to 0 if C is the only place where it converges, so radius is 0. Uh, if it converges everywhere, well, we can just say the radius is infinite, right? R is equal to infinity, right? So we could have zero, infinity, or some finite value in between. Those are the three possibilities, okay? Makes sense. Um, you can also consider the interval of convergence, right? So the domain of your power series Okay. Well, let's say x minus c. Let's, let's fit what we have over there. Well, there's actually a number of possibilities, right? Um, in the first case, we just get a single point. We could get r. Right? Or in other words, the interval from minus infinity to infinity. 
Um, we could have c minus r to c plus r as it is here. Um, one of the things the theorem doesn't address, though, is endpoints, right? We know we converge inside this open interval. We know we converge outside the open interval. Um, what about at the endpoints? Those typically have to be checked separately, right? You have to check the endpoints. So sometimes it'll happen that you get convergence at one endpoint, but not the other. And sometimes you actually get convergence at both endpoints. Um, all of these are possibilities, right? So this is typically the first question that you try to answer when you're handed a new power series. What is the radius of convergence? What is the interval of convergence? These are pretty typical questions, right? Because you want to know where your function is defined. If you're defining a function this way, right? Whenever somebody hands you a new function, it's reasonable to ask, what's the domain? This tells us sort of how to talk about the domain. It tells us what the domain is going to look like. Um, what it doesn't yet tell us is how to find the domain. Uh, we'll get to that in the next video.